Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another video where I take a trip to a heritage railway. Now last year I went on holiday with the intent of visiting a different preserved railway every day, and this was also I could gather some inspiration for my double O gauge layout, which is set on a preserved line. Now, the railway featured in today's video is one I was very excited about. It's been on my list to visit for absolutely ages, and you could say it was pretty much the inspiration for this entire trip. It is, of course, the Great Central Railway, and this is already a pretty long video, so let's cut this intro short and get straight to it. The day started at Loughborough Central, an absolutely gorgeous station with so much to look at. The train had just returned from its first run of the day and the 2MT at the front of it was ready to run round. Meanwhile, the resident 9F city of Leicester was also out and about getting ready to pull a special dining train later in the day. The station certainly had plenty of life, as no sooner was the 2MT coupled up to the train, the 9F passed through again off in search of its own rake of carriages. Thank you. 
and with a quick toot on the whistle, it was time for my first journey down the line. As we moved out onto the main line, it was nice to see some of the diesels on the railway being stored in a siding just outside the station. You may also notice there's a line running parallel to the one the train is on, and in fact the Great Central Railway is the only UK heritage railway that has a double track main line. This allows trains to pass each other pretty much anywhere on the railway, something you can't really experience anywhere else. And I didn't have to wait long, as soon enough we were passed by a Class 37 hauling another train on its way back to Loughborough. A little bit further down the line, we came to the first station on the railway, Cornham Woodhouse. It was just a very brief stop here, and soon enough we were on our way again. We did briefly stop for a moment on the viaduct outside Switherland sidings too. Once the signal was cleared though, we were able to proceed. Here you can see that line curving off to the right is the start of the Mount Sorrel Railway, a little one mile branch line which I believe rarely gets used. And then we were into Switherland Sidings, an impressive site in itself where a lot of the railway's rolling stock is stored, such as the Royal Mail train.
Shortly afterwards, we were approaching Rothley, the next station on the line, and the point at which the double track main line reduces down to single track. Like all the stations on the line, Rothley is presented beautifully, and I could have happily spent the entire day here just watching the trains come and go. And there was even a garden railway in operation next to the station too. Again, it was just a short stop here, and soon enough it was time for the train to continue. The Great Central Railway comes to an end at Leicester North, a new build station which is just a little bit further south than the original Belgrave and Burstall station. As the railway terminates here though, the BR2MT needed to run round the train again, ready for its trip back up the line.
Now, I just want to take a quick moment to thank all of you who have been watching and enjoying the videos lately. The channel has seen a massive amount of growth in the last few months and it's really great to see loads of new people discovering the channel, in addition to those of you who have been here since the very beginning. For those of you who have enjoyed the videos and would like to support the channel further, don't forget you can become a channel member to get access to loads of awesome bonus content and of course on certain tiers you also get early access to the videos as well. Also, if you've considered becoming a member in the past but haven't signed up yet, I'm curious to know if there's anything that you would really like to see as a new perk in the future. I'm always looking for ways to improve the membership and give you guys what you want, so let me know down in the comments if there's something that you would like to see. Membership itself starts at £1.99, so as I've said in the past, it's less than the price of a cup of coffee, and unlike coffee, it lasts an entire month. So yeah, check it out by clicking the join button below this video and see if it's something you'd like to be a part of. Hopefully I'll see you in the members area really soon, but for now, let's head back to the Great Central Railway. Having departed from Leicester North earlier, the train was now heading back up the line to Loughborough, of course stopping again at Rothley along the way. And just before we departed, I did get a good look at City of Leicester 2, which was passing straight through with the dining train. And soon enough we were moving again too. As we approach Corn and Woodhouse again, this time from the south, you can see just how big and open all of the stations are, and it certainly makes a change from heritage railways which often feel like they're crammed into tiny sites.
then before long the journey had come to an end and we were arriving back into Loughborough. While this particular journey had finished though, this certainly wasn't the end of the day. Beyond the station, it's possible to cross over the line and take a little walk down to the sheds to see some of the other locos. Back up by the platforms, the 2MT was needed for another trip down the line, so it was time for it to run round the train again. This time, with the dining train cleared from platform one, the 2MT was able to use this to complete the run round. And at this point I discovered just off platform one was a little museum which I was able to have a quick look round. Back out on the platform, the 9F City of Leicester was returning with the dining train from earlier. Now just beyond where the 9F had stopped was visiting Deltic Alicidon, which was unexpectedly started up while I was taking some footage of it.
sound of a Dell tick is definitely pretty awesome to hear. It was certainly making its presence known as the 9F moved over to Platform 2, ready for its final train of the day. With City of Leicester stabled in the loop next to Platform 2, it was time to wait for the Class 37 to return with the train the 9F would be taking over. And just like that, we were off again for another trip down the line.
passing through Switzerland sidings again, I was aware of just how many brake vans the Great Central Railway has, which makes me feel a lot less guilty about having so many in model form. The highlight of the day for me though was this moment where we passed the 2MT. Two steam engines passing each other on a double track mainline. What's not to love? It wasn't long before the train arrived into Rothley for another brief stop, before heading onto the single track line down to Leicester North. When the train arrived at Leicester North, there was just enough time to jump out and watch the 9F run round the carriages again. And then with the sound of the whistle, it was time to start the final journey of the day.
And this time, as we arrived back into Rothley, I noticed all of these rusty carriage bogies lying by the side of the track, along with an absolutely huge line of wheels too. We also got a quick look at this rather nice observation coach as we passed by too. And with that, my day at the Great Central Railway had come to an end. A truly fantastic line and a day I will never forget. I'm already looking forward to going back in the future, but that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.